So that's about no more than a foot right there. Um, the reason why I want this uh, distance is because I'm going to continue to lower on this after I've established something up high in order to actually make the transfer. Uh, I'm going to start off by like the default, what I would use on my gear. Um, and so for me, I have an adjustable cow's tail. It's the Petzl Progress Adjust Lanyard. I want to attach this as close as I can get it within reason to my descender. So right in there. I'm going to take my cow's tail, suck all the slack up. As I descend, the center goes slack. I change it out. I can take a disconnect off because I've already made one connection, um, and that's perfectly fine. It's not a half point connection, it's a full point of connection. I re rig below the knot, and when I re rig below the knot, I want to, this time I want to choke up. Less distance to go, the better. So. I choke up, I lock off, I want that knot flush to my device. Um, and now I just have to transfer this slack back into my descender. So the way I can do that with my uh, progress adjust is I can step up onto it, release the cam, let it ride. And then sit into my descender like that. And now I'm fully weighted on my descender. If I can, yeah, so sizing is everything. <laughs> if, if that was any uh, taller, I would have had to reset and, and tried it again. So sizing up your, your equipment is key. So for me, I've done that before. I know that works for me. Um, that's a way or one way to do it. Okay, uh, moving on. So I descend, there's another knot, it's below me. Same deal as before. I want to stop about, and again, it depends on what you're using equipment wise. This time I'm going to use something called a Val de Tain Tress, uh, VT, using the VT press. Uh, what's great about this is I can, this could be longer if I want. With the VT, it's pretty slow because I can bump it and it'll ride down with me. One, that's two, that's three. All right, so now that I have three wraps, I want to look at my tails. And as I come down, I want to make them even. So right now, this is a little bit longer, so I'm going to adjust until they're about even. Maybe about there. And I'm going to start crisscrossing. It doesn't matter how you do it, which way. I'm just going to start crisscrossing until we're, until we're out. Maybe like that. So I, I want to eliminate any slack anywhere. So if I can push this, stretch it, and when I descend, this time, so you can see the VT start to grip, start to wait. It's going to wait more. It keeps waiting, and look at the descender now. Now it's completely slack. Now I can take the descender out, move it below the knot, and just like before, I want this thing butted right up against it. So with the VT, what's great about this, uh, what's great about the VT is that I can, I can bump this down loaded with my weight. So check this out. So just like that, it's a controlled release. I'm gonna keep going on this until my descender gets re-weighted. So check that out. VTs are made out of the, uh, the aramid fibers. They grip really well. They don't melt. And look at that. Cool. VT is like uh, kind of like a Purcell Prusik in a way. And speaking of Purcell Prusik, maybe we'll do that one next. All right. So moving down. Same deal as before. Um, I stop within about a foot of my knot so that it gives me enough space to transfer tension over. So that's a little bit less than a foot right there. So right here. Two wrap uh, prusiks are fine for single person loads. Um, three wraps are for two person loads, but three wraps work for one person as well. But no two wrap, uh, don't do a two wrap when you have a rescue load, just a single person load. All right. And my Purcell is as tight as I'm gonna be able to get it. I wanna set this in advance, because if I don't, it can just slip when I weight it. So I'm gonna choke up on the Purcell, 
as much as I can. And then same, same thing as before, I just descend. And transfer my weight onto the Purcell. The ID goes loose, take it out, re-rig it below the knot. Oop. Choke it up so that the knot is as close to the device as possible. Lock it off so I don't lose it. And now, just like the VT Prusik, I can transfer on the Purcell back to my descender. Something like that. But you can see how high I've got to go to release that if I can't even release it. So the question is, did the Purcell work? In this case, probably not, because I'm gonna have to send back up and grab that. So the Purcell sizing matters. This was the Purcell that comes with the Aztec kits. So test your gear out, make sure it works before you actually get yourself on it. Because right now it's not quite taut, but just enough to where I can't get it out and I can't reach it either, so I'm stuck. So now I have to revert to plan B, the senders back on, put loop back in, reconnect. So again, golden rule, never descend something that you can't climb back up. Case in point. Step up, get that out. Now I'm on my descender. I troubleshot it. And then I continue on. So we're gonna do uh, passing with uh, a chest descender or a curl. And then another knot down there, we're gonna do passing with a prusik. So um, again, uh, within a foot to six inches. Here I stopped, uh, that's about six inches. Um, again, thou shalt not plummet, golden rule for a prescue, first rule. Um, and then for passing knots, keep everything tight and don't take something off without putting something on first. So I never climb something or repel something that you can't go the other way. So if I'm repelling, never go repel without the ability uh, to ascend back up on a rope. So let's hook up my cow's tail. And so I wanna transfer weight or tension off my ascender or descender onto my crawl. So I'm gonna start with my crawl open and I step, make a step, I get up into it. And right here, I don't know if you can see that, Jan, but right here, that's where I pop in and then I sit into my crawl. And I, I can probably come down a little bit on my crawl. So maybe like right in there, it's a little bit better. So that distance is a little bit better. Okay, so I'm waiting on my crawl. I don't even have to like, descend on this to transfer the tension. That's what's so great about the crawl and the ascender uh, combination or the handle descender combination. Now I can take this out, re-rig it below the knot and make sure that that knot is butt up against my descender right there. So I want that knot to be right smack there and I lock that off best I can, let that sit. So I have to transfer this little bit back into my descender and so I'm weighted on two places. And so what I can do is I can shimmy down um, and this is where my cow's tail, maybe a little bit looser is probably a little more advantageous. Again, I don't wanna have more than a foot of slack in here. Otherwise, any one point here does not count as a point if there's more than one foot of slack. Um, so I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna shimmy down. Even further. So I'm a little bit lower than I was. And so now I can lower my handle to center down because like I said, this is, this is precious real estate. You don't want your gear to get away from you. Um, and so here I can still step up and release on my crawl. And now I can just sit into my descender and now I'm waiting on my descender and I can still reach my handle to center to come off completely, let that drop. And then I can just send on down. Okay, passing a knot on repel with just a prusik and a handle ascender. So again, uh, a little bit of space here to transfer the tension onto the prusik. Um, so hopefully this works out. Otherwise, I can always un unscrew everything. If, as long as I have the ability to climb back up the rope, I'm golden. So three wrap prusik is fine. Um, I can do, so let's see where the carabiner lands on this. If the carabiner is too short, I can back this off and do a two wrap prusik. 
um, to give me the distance. Again, two wrap prusik is fine for single person loads. But if it's a two person load, I'm gonna want a three wrap prusik. And I wanna cinch this prusik up as tight as it'll go. Because I don't wanna lose this distance for this to stretch out. Because if I didn't get enough here, I'm gonna wait uh, the knot and I'm not gonna be able to pass this. So as I descend, you can see the, the prusik starting to grab and now my ID is completely loose. Okay, so I'm suspended on one point. I've made one point of connection. I can take off this point of connection and re-rig the ID or descender below, just below the knot and get that knot all the way up against my device. So there's no, there's no distance between that descender or, and the knot. So that's good. Now I just have to pass, I just have to transfer tension from here back on the descender. Um, but there's no way I'm gonna be able to release this under load. And so that's why I need to handle the sender. I can connect here, step up, bump the pressing down on top of the handle of the sender, um, which might be a safer option than doing it here. Because as I bump down, this might get too high for me. So what I'm gonna do is start low, some thrust to step up, and now I can bump this prusik down a little bit more. Weight it, so I'm on my prusik, I can bump my handle of the sender down a little bit more, step into it, weight that prusik, get that prusik down. Because this is precious real estate, everything, and this distance between my forehead and my pelvic ring is precious real estate. I don't want anything to get away from me. So now I can go high, but I want to get this handle of sender really close, as close as I possibly can to that prusik right there. Step up, bump the prusik down a little bit. I can even bump this prusik down to like, till it's sitting on the knot. Okay, and I'm kind of sort of weighted here a little bit. So let's see if I can step up on my handle of the sender unclip and weight my ID and now I still can reach my handle to sender take that off my prusik is loose so I can take that off too I've already passed the knot at this point and I'm good to go so if you don't have all the fancy gear and all you have is like a prusik and a handle to sender you can easily pass this knot you just have to make sure that you keep it tight um, precious real estate between the pelvic ring and your forehead um, and that's another way to do it